Unraveling the events of that fateful day, more and more lawmakers are coming forward and speaking to what they saw and heard on what should have been a solemn day for American politics. Joining us now, Representative Teresa Leger Fernandez. She represents New Mexico's third congressional district. Representative, nice to see you. Thank you so much, Kira, for having me and for commemorating with America January 6th. Of course. And you were watching, as we all were, President Biden speaking this morning. He didn't mince uh, any words as to his feelings with regard to the perpetrators behind this attack on our nation's capital, nor former President Donald Trump. Let's take a listen. Those who stormed this capital and those who instigated and incited and those who called on them to do so held a dagger at the throat of America at American democracy. They didn't come here out of patriotism or principle. They came here in rage, not in service of America, but rather in service of one man. You know, as we listen into that, in service of one man, that actually stood out to us and made us think about the interview with the Santa Fe New Mexican that you said, uh, quote, you understood that what we were witnessing on January 6th was the culmination of months of the former president making falsehoods, lying about what happened in November. Is the former president directly responsible for the events that unfolded that day? Absolutely. There is no doubt that he is responsible. And we have discovered since that day of January 6th so much more evidence of his directing this, his failure to stop the violence that was going on, and the fact that this was a culmination of what he was trying to do, which is we must always remember overturning the election, overturning the will of the people, throwing out those 150 million votes that were cast on in November. So yes, he is responsible. You know, we have seen uh, those just breathtaking images, gut-reaching uh, images of so many people, including you, the lawmakers, hiding on the House floor balcony as those extremists just uh, barged into the Capitol building and took over. You had just been sworn in three days prior. You were new to the job. What were you thinking at the moment? My reaction, and I was lucky, I must make clear, I was not in the gallery on the floor. I was barricaded in an office uh, in the Capitol ground, in the, the Longworth office, was anger, anger at the fact that we had let this get as far as it did. And sadness, such sadness for more beautiful, beautiful and beloved democracy that it was under such violent attack. I'm a voting rights expert. I have been fighting for the ability of all of our communities to participate in our democracy for decades. And that's a fight we must continue, but I never expected it to become a fight that was physical and violent. And that is something that I think it is important for us all to remember today and going into the future, future and that we use that as a motivator to address the changes that we need to make in our laws and to actually ask everybody to become involved, as our historian said, this is up to all of us to come and say that our democracy is so beloved, so important, so precious to us that we are going to do everything we can to protect it. And I hope you don't mind, but as I see all the family pictures behind you, uh, there's another interesting twist. Not only were you new to the job, but your son was with you that day. Um, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine the conversations between mother and son, but I think you have something to tell us here. As a parent, not only were you experiencing this moment as, as a political leader, but as a mother, and how did did you balance those two? What do you think your son learned from this? Um, how did it help you as a parent and just looking toward, looking at the balance of your life, right? Your two priorities, your work and your family and what was happening? Well, my sons, I had three children and they accompanied me, even though we didn't have a ceremony, they accompanied me to DC so that 
I could get sworn in. There was no ceremony, so they watched it from my office, but they wanted to be there. And Dario, Dario stayed with me because he wanted to participate in more of the events. He wanted to be witness. He was so proud of his ability to be witness to history, but he was traumatized. When we finally got home and we were safe, we held each other and we cried in each other's arms because we had just gone through something that was traumatic. Um, but that was also part of history. And he and my other children, they never expected to have to have the kind of security we now have to have the conversations with law enforcement to protect me and my family and all of the Congress people. I mean, we are all under attack now. But they also resolved that we are on the right side of history in that. Our work, and, and he says it, is it's to support you, Mom. I mean, we are here for you. We are here because we know it's important, the work you do. And so, you know, he's, he's with us. He still plans on going to all the parades and everything else <laughs> that we do uh, as, a, as a congressional family. Um, so he, he, he's with us on it, and he's with America on it. And I think that that is also the lesson. I have, I have had conversations with lots of young people, with people across, you know, my district about this. And they do talk about how it opened their eyes because they never ever could have imagined that something like this would happen. They saw our democracy as something that was simply there, that it was solid. But it was, we have to remember, something that we have all built over centuries, that we've worked to improve it with every generation. And their generation is going to also have to get involved to help us protect it and to help us strengthen it. So they're going to be the ones in the streets. They're going to be the ones calling upon us. They're the, going to be the ones actively pushing us to do the right thing. I have a feeling we'll be paying uh, very close attention to your kids, in particular your son that was with you that day. What an education. I hope he does decide to go into leadership. I'm sure it impacted him <laughs> tremendously. Representative Fernandez, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kira. Thank you to everyone for participating in today's events. Of course. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.